Well, hey, today we're going to do something that I find really, really fun. We're going to spend a little bit of time doing simple embellishments on simple surfaces. For example, a key, an old key that you had laying around in a drawer, maybe a heart charm, uh, maybe a pendant, uh, even a little spoon maybe. I'm going to show you how to wire wrap a key to make it hang. A couple little simple things that are basically just an extension of stuff we've really already done in the videos. But, eh, we'll repeat it. It's always good to repeat. <laughs> so anyway, step on over here. I'm going to show you some cute stuff that I pulled out from our website stock that I like to work with and some found items that I prepared and I'm going to show you what I have done to some keys and pendants and mounts and stuff and then you're going to take it to the next level. Okay so on my surface here I just got all kinds of stuff but let's focus on what we can do with it. First of all you might have seen in the beginning of the video that I was wearing this key I just did a real simple embellishment with that. I glued a little rose like this one, only it was blue, and then a little preset vintage stone, put it on a bale, hung a couple little check um, glass pearls, and that was that. And I love to wear this. In fact, I wear these two together all the time. We did this together in another video. If you want to go back, oh, a few videos, a few months, we did this one where we set the stone and a turtle back and then we drilled it through one of the holes in the, it's not a stone, it's a button. We set an eternal back and went through the hole, wired it on, and glued this flower on top of it. Real simple, real simple. Anyway, let's do some new stuff today. So, Javi, if you want to kind of follow me over here. We're experimenting to see if we can get this camera not to blur when she focuses. So we'll see if we're more successful today. Here are some things that I did just this morning. <clears throat> Here's a key that I wire wrapped and just glued an old crystal earring. In fact, it's not quite set up yet. So that was simple. I'll show you how to do that. Um, here's a key that I just took. This was a broken earring and I put a little bit of Gilder's paste on the flowers to give it some color, a little bit on the key and a piece of broken rhinestone jewelry I glued right here. And so that's ready to be put on a bale and put on a necklace, like this one was. You know, you could just picture how that would look. Very pretty. We find that so many times we struggle to learn new techniques and do all this big work. And that's a very good thing to do because that's our education as jewelry making artists. But so many times I'm finding now that I have the shop here in East Palestine that what sells are the simpler little things that you can make and you don't have to sell for over $50. That's, that's what's going to pay your rent for you. And what's interesting, it's not just me here in the shop, but it's also across the board. I'm hearing it from so many of our creative group members, the creative group that we have at Facebook, that they're finding simpler works better. People love to see what I call the big opus pieces with all the techniques in them. But what they're going to buy a lot of times is a simple little piece like this key on a chain. Okay, so to show you how. First of all, I take a key and what you need to do is you need, if you're using old keys, you need to first degrease them by cleaning them in some hot soapy water and then uh, buffing them out and then drying them. And then sometimes you might have to take some triple aught steel wool zero 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 steel wool very fine steel wool and that will clean them up without scratching them a lot and even like a sunshine cloth you can see this one's kind of needing to be disposed of once they get really black you got to throw them out that cleans them up pretty good if you don't clean them up stuff won't stick to them because they they get nasty and grimy over time but anyway this one's in good shape now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start out with my wire and my round nose pliers and I'm just going to make a little loop like that. We've done this together so many times, guys. But 
it never hurts to repeat. Or maybe you're tuning in for the first time. So I use my round nose. Now these are chain nose pliers. Some call them flat, but they're chain nose. Okay, and I'm just going to take and move this around a few times. Kind of swirl it around and make a spiral. Somebody didn't like it that I called it a, I call it a swirly or something. And some um, one who does wire jewelry and is very serious about it was kind of miffed because I called it a swirly. So it is a spiral. And that's how I did it. All right, now I'm going to kind of break the neck of it, bend it at a right angle the best that I can. And I'm going to insert it through the hole in the key. And then right about here, I'm going to bend it up, okay? And bend it together. And then I'm going to pull it around, and I'm going to begin to wrap it with my fingers. I use Beadsmith Silver 20 gauge wire to do this kind of work. I sell it at bsuperboutiques.com. I love this wire. It's my favorite. I could only like sterling more, but sterling's very expensive right now, so this is what I like to use. Okay, so that there I go. I've got it wrapped. Kind of wonky wrap, but that's how I like to do my wraps. I like loose wraps. Okay, now what am I going to do? Next thing is I'm going to come around like this. Okay. And come I might go right here and come around like this. And then I have a little tail left. Okay. And I'm going to loop it now. And just kind of make it into a loose loop that's kind of pretty. There you go. That's good enough. Could come in a little bit more. All right. I like how that looks. Okay. That's how it looks on the back. This is how it looks on the front. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over this wire to embellish it with something. Um, I don't know. What shall I put? What shall I put? Well, first I think I'm going to bend this wire this way a little bit and kind of get it out of the way of what I want to put here. And then, I think maybe I'll just glue this on here. This is a piece of an old earring. It looks kind of good. It's simple, but it, it looks kind of good. Okay, so now I'm going to get my E6000 glue out. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back. And we've talked about glue technique before, so that's nothing new. Hopefully, I get it on here just right. I did. It looks good. There you go. And now I have a nice embellished key. Now, I'll fiddle with this later. Okay, guys. I'll fiddle with this later. And I'll make it even better because this is kind of sticking up a little. So I might put a little rhinestone chain in there. But because I've just now glued it, I really don't want to do anything else to it right now. But it's just, you know, it's that's the fun of it. You just get some stuff and you just start playing. It's just about playing. And there's nothing, you know, difficult about it. Okay, so now you can see I did this one earlier today. I'm going to move these out of the way. And I wrap this key on both ends so now I can hang chain and make a necklace. Well now how did I do this? Well I'm going to attempt to reprise that for you as well the best that I can. So again I'm going to start with making a spiral but this time it's going to be looser because I'm going to have to put a jump ring through it because it's going to be what hangs the piece. Okay. So I'm going to go about like that, okay? Sorry for the 
jumpy fingers, but that's called too much coffee. All right, now I'm going to roll it just a little bit. That's good. Right about like that. And now I'm going to break the neck here. And let's see, did I have the right key out here? For this This is the kind of key you want for this. Now this one I've drilled a hole in. So I was going to do something else with this, but you need to have a key that comes out like this in order to do this. Like this kind of key. You could do it, but you have to wrap it different. So just for the sake of time, this time we're going to use this key. Okay, and now I've got that going up that way, so I'm probably going to want to use it this side because you want your little teeth down. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and once again I'm going to use my fingers to push up and once you, with this wire that's so simple to do. And I'm going to come up tight, come through the hole and pull it tight. And it looks like I'm making a mess of this. Of course it's because I'm on camera and you're watching me. You're watching me. Okay, so now I did that. Can you see? Then I'm going to wrap around the neck a little bit. A couple times. And then I'm going to come up this way. See? Come around this way one more time. I'm going to leave a space here. so that I can hang stuff. And since I have the benefit of this hole, I'm going to come up through it. Now I drilled that hole with my drill press. Hole punches, I don't know how well that's going to work. I don't know how good a hole punch is going to work. As you can see, I'm a little bit short of wire, but I can still make this work. It just won't be as fancy as this one. So probably you'd want to cut a little bit more wire. Let's see how much wire did I cut. That's probably five, six inches, so maybe cut seven or eight. Wire is inexpensive, you know, if you cut a little too much, better than being short like I am here. But I can still make this work. Okay, so now I'm going to bend this over tight. Real tight. And now I'm going to roll it with my needle nose. Just allowing enough room to hang. And then, my chain nose and flatten it, like that. Now with more, I mean you can get as artsy as you want. I mean you can make all kinds of swirls and things, but this is just like technically showing you basically how you go around the key. If you don't have a hole here, you would just come up and just wrap it around like I did on this one. See how I just came up the side here? And this one I actually, I beat it too on my bench block. You can see how it is in the back, okay? But there's enough here to wrap. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could take and get another piece of wire and add to this and just wrap around this and come back around the other way. Kind of like when we made the bracelets for the beady charmies. You could take another piece of wire and come back around through and do all kinds of stuff. You can make it very ornate with all kinds of loops and places to hang stuff and make it hang down really low. But this is simple and it's the basic premise. Okay, now, so what are we gonna do next? Well, you might notice on this one, I've got actually a little mini spoon. Now, how did I do that? Well, a real spoon, like a piece of silver plated flatware, is, is very, very tough to cut. You need a jeweler saw to do that. But this is brass under here and it's not that tough. And these are actually really, really cool to use. I cut them right about here and I mark them first with my cutters, but you're not going to want to try and cut through that with these cutters because they're not strong. I'm just marking it. Okay, so you can see where I have my line. Then I take my red and white scissors from our website. If you don't have scissors like these, believe me, you want 
these scissors. They're only like $15. They're one of the best tools you can have because they'll cut through a lot of soft metals, which this is. So I'm not going to have to get my jeweler's file out. Jeweler's saw out for this. Boom, there it goes. Now, of course, I need to file this. So hold on a minute because I didn't bring my file out. That was dumb. Okay, here I am with my file. I'm coming back. Okay, now when you file, you file one way. Always going one way. I'm sure you experienced filers have like all kinds of cool ways. I took, believe it or not, I took a metal smithing class with Thomas Mann, who is like the pinnacle of metal smithers. I was <laughs> totally unprepared for that class, but I took it because I knew it would be humbling and I knew I would learn a lot. And he had this big brooch file that he filed like this. And just in a few swipes, he would get it. The main thing is, is that once you get this done, that it be smooth, okay? Ooh, that's a nasty noise. You know what, for the sake of no nasty noise, let's just skip that. I'll come back and fix this later, but I want to show you how I bend it, okay? So I take and I go like this, bend it over a little bit, and then I get my bail making pliers, which are these. Bail making pliers? And we carry these at the site too. And I just start turning it. It's soft. You are not probably going to be able to do a piece of silver plated flatware with a bail making pliers. Let me tell you what. This is probably not going to happen. And I've got my chain nose under there to finish it. I just want to try to get a nice smooth bend in it first. Okay. You want to get that down flat so that your chain or your jump ring or whatever isn't going to end up coming through it. Get down flat. And then I'm probably going to bend this back out a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. So it gives a nice angle to it. So I have a nice little spoon pendant. So now what do I do with it? Well, I'm going to hang it on there. And I like to use like sometimes a couple of jump rings when I hang stuff like this because I don't know, I think it just looks better. So first I'm going to put one jump ring so that I can hang it. I think this will go through. Again, you see I'm using my jumpy tool, which I can't live without. Boy, I just really drank too much coffee today. Shaky hands. i got to remember, next time doing a video, cut the gel out. It doesn't really matter. I mean, so long as I can do the work, which I can. thing is, it kind of looks bad when I'm trying to show you. Okay, that's nice and flush. Come through, put that on, and I'm going to double, double jump the ring this. Get it nice and flush. There's another one, about the same size. Yeah, it is the same size. I'll get the same size. And we'll go through again. There you go. I've got that on there. Okay, now so what am I gonna do to fix this up? Well, as you see on this one, I used a really cute little hand thing. This little finding. We have these in our embellishment kits. Sometimes we have them on the website, but right now they're in the embellishment kits. So I'm gonna glue this on here. Like that. Okay. Now I need to put something in the bowl of the spoon. So I made this one blue. Maybe I'll make this one pink. Now to make this fit right, I need to cut this off. This is very brittle resin, so I'm going to just kind of clip it off here and stick it here. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. 
and into the bowl of the spoon it goes. Okay, now I have a little bit of a spot here, so I think that'd be a good place to put a pearl like I did on that one. So I'm going to just take and I'm going to get it in a little bit of the glue here and stick it right here. And there you go. Very nice. And then I can think, you know, what do I want to do with that? Do I want to put more stuff? Maybe I put a little piece of rhinestone chain there or something, but I'll do that later. This I just did for the sake of showing you possibilities. Right? That's what it's about. Possibilities. Having fun. Not having to know a lot of techniques. Just simple things. Okay? Alright. Now. What else can we do? Well, here was one that I thought would be kind of simple to show you. But we're going to have to use a toothpick to glue it. I have this nice little silver... Uh, finding here the Zeron flush cutters that we carry at the website. They're very economical and they work really well. They work as well as ones that are much, much more expensive. And then I'll glue this on top of here. That'll be pretty, huh? Now, if I had a hole here, I could actually maybe hang another dangle, couldn't I? And maybe I could put this little rose, couldn't I? That's an idea. I think for the sake of time, I'm just going to keep moving on, but there's a good possibility with that one, right? Very simple. Okay. Now, here is a mount that I've prepared. I've already put on a chain. I've, I'm going to mix, I'm going to put crystal in this, so I've put a crystal silver magnetic clasp on the back. People like these. So since I'm going to mix the metals up, and maybe what I'll do is put some silver things down the side, but you know, just for simple, just simple. I found this nice mat. These are both satin mat that we carry at the site. This is bead and link chain and the gold plate we have at the site. All U.S. made, very good quality. Now, normally with filigree, it's a little bit hard to glue you know, because it come, wants to come up through. But in this case, we're going to put something on top of it, so it's really not going to matter. So I just want to be sure I get enough to, you know, hold it really well. And that will do it. And you also want to watch pattern in your filigree when you go to glue it. Make sure, you know, if it has a pattern, that the pattern is even and equal. So I'm going to put this, you know, normally you see a mount like this, and you want to go put a cameo in it, right? But you don't have to. Instead, you can put this rose, which I'm about to do. That's nice. Now, I've flattened that a bit because I want to take and put this crystal in the middle. Now, how pretty is that? And it kind of goes then with the crystal on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This, though, I think needs to flatten a little bit. Sticking up a little bit too much. Yeah, there we go. That's better. You like things to be level and even and, you know, look right. Okay, that looks good. You got that, Javi? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put the little repurposed earring in the middle. You could put a stone, you could put a cluster of pearls, a little rose, another little rose if you want, whatever. This is going to be so pretty. And then we could even hang like a few little silver charms going up the side, maybe. Mm -hmm. And that would, you know, add, pull it together a little bit more with the clasp. And it would be a very simple little thing that didn't take long to make, but someone would be very happy to wear this for a long time. Another thing that you could do with a mount, besides put a cameo or a stone in it, is just do something simple like this. I'm going to just do it right now. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this ribbon rose. People like fabric mixed. Sometimes I'll put that right there. I like that. But I'm leaving some space here. Now why am I doing that? Because I have some cute buttons here. And I'm going to kind of stick some buttons in the side of it. 
I just love old buttons. Shell buttons. My favorites. Let's see what else I got. Some nice flowers. Just a couple for an accent, you know. Just a few. People love old buttons. And then I'm going to take and maybe put a pearl in there. You know, a couple of them maybe. I'm going to reach over here. Excuse me. Put another pearl. I like to put pearls in threes when I do assemblage. It just kind of makes, um, I think, balance. Okay, look it. See how simple was that and how pretty is that? I'll put some chain on that and it'll be good to go. Simple embellished surface, very easy. Now this will be a little bit more difficult. This is going to be the last one we do today. This is a piece of an old earring. In fact, this was never even plated. You can see from this is how they put these things together. They solder them first. You can see the pool puddled solder and then the raw brass. But that's okay. We kind of like that mixed metals look. I'm going to put it on this silverware plated fine. Doesn't that look like it looks really kind of art deco, don't you think? So now, to get this on here nice, because we don't want a lot of this showing through, I'm going to have to get my glue on a toothpick and go along. Get it on here. I'm probably going to need a little bit more glue than that. And I might even want to get a little bit on the back of this kind of beaded edge here, maybe right here and right here. At the end of the video, I may go back and do a little bit more gluing just to make sure it's secure because I don't want to be here all day and all night because you want to go to your workbench and start making things too. But you're feeling like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so just turn that around and put that on. I want to get it on there real nice and even. And it is very nice. See? And this is kind of hanging down. It's got a little bit of movement to it. It's pretty even. If not, I'll move it around. Yeah, that's the nice thing about E6000. You've got time to move it around. But then I had this Paris charm, so I clipped the top off of it. And I thought it would look good, like, right here. So I'm going to get my glue again. And uh, I'm just going to kind of drag this through the glue a little bit. Not too much. And put it on. It's on. Maybe I'll go back and put a little bit more later. But it gives you the idea. Okay? And then all I need to do is find some chain. Or I could bead something up and make it very, very interesting. Because I know I've said in other videos, oh, you know, I kind of hate to see just a simple chain on something. It looks like, well, you could have done more with the design, which you could. But sometimes in the idea of being able to make something at a price that people are more apt to buy, sometimes you do just put a simple chain on. That's up to you. Or you could put a chain, maybe it's chained this way and coming this way. It speeds, so it's kind of asymmetric. I love that look. That's really classy, and it's very fashion-forward as well. So you could do that. I was going to show you something to do with this heart. We have these on this site in the new Economy Silver finish. Um, I did put Gilder's Paste over that. So now, you know, use your imagination. If you had this piece, what would you put in there? Would you put a cameo? Would you put a collage? Would you put another key across it, maybe um, going sideways, maybe? Not this key. Nah, not that one. But you could put like a key stamping going sideways, maybe. You could wrap something and put on. There's so many things you could do. So with that, I'm going to leave you to think about, hmm, what will I do next with my embellishments? If you need embellishments, we have lots of them at bsuboutiques.com. There are over 7,000 items at that website. And I love little things like this. If you can pan over a little bit, Robbie. To, uh, Robbie, not Robbie. <laughs> Robbie usually does this. we got Abby <laughs> now. Things like this. We have little embellishment kits at the site, too, under the jewelry kit section, which we will be developing. And... Um, 
this is all kinds of stuff in there for you to try if you want to add some stuff with your found items. I like the mix of found items with a few new shiny items. It's a good look and something that always is intriguing to people. When you're really given it for a gift or you have it in a shop and they want to buy it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed doing it. In fact, I'm going to continue to enjoy this as Javi edits the video. And we're going to have some fun. And you can show us what you have done if you'd like to come and join us at the Bisu Boutiques Creative Group at Facebook. I would be delighted to allow you access to that page where you can join with us. There's over 1,600 of us now. Today is December 13th, 2013. So it's only going to grow. And we'd love for you to join us. So I hope you will. And come visit me too sometime at bisuboutiques.com where we have all the things that you need to make this type of stuff. All the things you've seen in my videos is stuff mostly from our website. So in case you're wondering where it comes from, it comes from bisuboutiques.com. Have a great day, and we'll look forward to the next video.